All right, so I was gonna make this video after I was finished building this thing, but I'm encountering so many flaws and issues that I might just lose track of them. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start showing you guys what I've encountered so far and just record as I've built this thing. So first of all, this thing is pretty much a CR10 copy. I mean, they try to make this look like a CR10 in the pictures, they did make it look big. I thought this display was this big in the pictures. I mean, this thing looked much bigger than the CR10 display. Second thing in the unboxing, we found like this thing has three printed parts in here, even the spool holder, which is disappointing. I mean, they thought they could get away with it because they had the ANET A8, which had some 3D printer parts, but I mean, come on, this is a $300 printer and then once the sale's over, they're gonna sell it for $400. And the best part is these aren't even high quality prints. Even these end caps are 3D printed. Come on. I mean, it was just a duct, that would be fine, but really, even the duct looks horrible. But I mean, just look at this thing as well. Look how wobbly this is. This doesn't feel like $300 or $400. If you take a look at the switch right here, I had to jam this wire in between the screw and the terminal. Here's another thing, if you take a look at these Z-axis motors right here, they are held in with a single screw that was stripped from the factory. I mean, just look at this thing, it's stripped right out of the box, even the other side as well. And they're not even held in tightly, just look at this. Again, this is not $400, it's just wobbling like that, that's not cool. And the fun doesn't stop there. Check this out, even in the pictures, and I've looked at it in the video, this thing doesn't go. And you're probably asking, why doesn't it go? Well, if you take a look at the stepper motors, I have no idea how they made it work. I mean, if you take a look at the picture here, that's how they are set up. I don't know how they're making this work. It's just hitting with that. You can see that it's clearly hitting with the connector. And now that I have taken the wires out, it goes in perfectly. I'm noticing that it's still hitting, like, it's still hitting with that connector. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna disassemble this part and just flip the motor outwards like that. So the connections are on the outside here. What is going on here? And that is what I encountered so far. It's not looking good. So here's how I'm fixing this thing. Uh, basically, I took out the bracket right here that's attached to the stepper motor, and I'm just gonna go ahead and flip this over and take the bracket here and put it back into place. That should be all I need to do. And check this out. I just noticed this. This thing is bent. What? Now, another thing is, by the time I finish building this thing, there's gonna be so many white marks and or shiny silver marks, and that is because this whole thing is just painted black cheaply and pretty much anything you're gonna to touch is gonna to have white marks on it by the end of this build All right, so this one is in place now But the other side I'm having a big issue with it and I had to actually take out the 3d printed top here Yes, this part is also 3d printed and uh, I had to take this apart because This other screw right here was screwed on too tightly and it got stripped So what I gotta do now is somehow take it out and then hop into the uh, spare parts goodie bag right here and replace that screw now, I don't even think they have a screw in here for that size. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's actually a spare screw. So right now, I am pretty screwed. Literally, there's no screws and I have no idea how I'm gonna flip this over because that thing doesn't wanna go while this thing is installed. Because once again, this thing comes by and hits that. So, yeah. All right, so good news, I got the screw out uh, thanks to these pair of pliers. And for all I know, the screw was already stripped from the factory because it came out really easily with this pair right here. And I didn't even have to apply too much pressure. So I'm gonna go ahead and dig into my pile of screws. Hopefully I'll find something similar and move on. All right, so I was able to find replacement screws inside my PC screw box right there. And I was able to use the screws that are used on 2.5 inch hard drives or SSDs and they fit in very nicely. And I replaced actually both of them because I didn't wanna waste my time with an Allen key. It's pretty annoying. So there we go. So everything is now back together. And now if I scroll this around, no issues. Hopefully that's it. But I also encountered another issue. So you know how these are 3D printed? Uh, these bearings right here, one of them fell out and I actually had to jam it back in there. But it's fine now. So hopefully it doesn't fall again because I mean, so far I'm putting this thing together and it feels like I'm building an ANET A8, like a complete DIY printer, which is like acrylic and dirt cheap and it's breaking apart but this is a $400 printer that they're trying to sell so so far it's not looking good all right so it seems like I have fixed this issue or improved it and you can see that it's no longer wobbling like crazy and what you want is to grab a pair of pliers as well as the allen key that you need for these two screws right here so now you can see how stripped the black coating is it's very cheap but uh, yeah I just tightened these two really good and make sure you screw them in really well and then you want to go down here and open this assembly up and uh, you can see that the bottom roller actually can move up and down so Unscrew it and push it up really hard while trying to screw it back in. So you gotta put an Allen key. You gotta do some finger acrobatics while having the Allen key on the other side while having a pair of pliers and tightening this thing. 
But yeah, this thing can move up and down, so you make sure you put it all the way up and tighten it really, really well. So that should be it for the roller. And hopefully that's all the issues that we're gonna encounter during the assembly process because we're pretty much done now. And once you're done putting it together, make sure you tighten this belt right here. All right, finally, after a bunch of issues and hassles that I had to deal with and ordeals to get this printer put together, I have finally done it. So now we're gonna go ahead and turn it on and see if it's gonna turn on safely or if it's gonna blow up on me. And if you're in North America, make sure you put the voltages to the correct one, which is 110 volts. Even though the cable that came with North American it is still set at 220 volts stock, at least for my unit. So let's go ahead and turn it on and see what happens. All right. Okay, this screen looks like it, it came from a horrible batch of screens. It feels like they took one of the cheapest screens that they found and they just used it. If you look at it from the top here, that's what I'm seeing. I'm seeing a big mess. It's not clear unless you go down here, then you can see what's happening. And it's pretty loud. All right, so what we have concluded from this assembly process is that this printer seems to be a $400 disaster. So if you're someone who ordered this thing, then I recommend getting the CR10 over it. Try to refund that, get the CR10. This is a complete disaster from the looks of it. But we are still gonna get a chance, of course. We are gonna be printing out, testing it out, and putting it to the test, and comparing it to the actual CR10. This is pretty much an attempt to copy the CR10, make it look like the CR10. I mean, even the box here, even the design with the outline and whatnot. This thing is nowhere near the CR10, especially in the structural build quality. And they want to charge $400 for it after the sale is over. But anyways, that is pretty much it for this video. So we have encountered a bunch of issues and we have solved them and I showed you guys how to fix them. So hopefully if you're unfortunate enough and already have this thing in your hand and you want to put this together, hopefully this video will help you if you encounter any of these issues. So thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, hit the like button and subscribe for content like this and stay tuned for the actual review and the comparison. And yeah, see you guys in the next one. Take care everyone.